Hey guys, it's good to have you back. So today we're going to do a good thing. We're going to prepare to upgrade to the Zabbix uh, version 7.4, which is officially not yet released. We are in RC1 or RC2, something like that. So it basically means that the official release of the 7.4 is going to be very, very soon, which in fact means that it's time to prepare for the upgrade. And don't you worry the fact that the version is not out uh, officially yet. It doesn't mean that we cannot prepare for the upgrade because to be honest like on a high level the upgrade procedure is very very similar it's kind of basically the same across all of the major versions but still it's important to have up-to-date guide for someone who will be looking for uh, help and uh, to make this happen i myself have zabbix uh, 7013 i've installed it uh, just now and we can check even here, Zabbix server minus capital V, so it's 7.0.13. Um, and I also have MySQL 8.0.41, which I'm going to use for this tutorial. And the second thing that I have is uh, init max wiki about how to upgrade to the latest version 7.4. And as I said, like I have uh, MySQL, so the guide will be based on MySQL, but they have a guide on how to perform an upgrade on a PostgreSQL uh, with a Timescale DB extension, which also has some good things about database updates. So please be cautious with the combination of PostgreSQL 17 and some Timescale DB version. So if you're a user of this database engine, then uh, this tutorial will come very handy for you. Uh, I just decided to make it uh, good for everyone. So if you're a Postgres, go straight to this wiki if you're on uh, mysql you can just follow through my video so starting with the basics like this time we'll demonstrate how to upgrade zabbix to the latest version 7.4 the update will be based on zabbix version 7.0 php version 8.0 and mysql in my case without the timescale db obviously so um we can check php fpm version in my system but oh sorry uh exit PHP FPM, so I have a PHP 8.0.30, and uh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, let me go back. So I showed you I have my SQL 8, but basically the first thing that you definitely need to do is read the release notes of the release that you're going to upgrade to. And this might sound like silly, it's like reading instructions for something you already know, but trust me, it is important because what you can find here in the features and in the bug fixes, especially if you already have some production instance working uh, on some older versions, maybe it's not 7.2, maybe you're upgrading from 6.0 or maybe 5.0, it's very likely that something has changed over these versions. And it's better to grab some mug of coffee and read through all of this stuff and be aware of what your Zabbix is going to look like after the upgrade rather than just blindly going yum upgrade everything and then being surprised why some monitoring doesn't work anymore and perhaps some scripts are not working or some api stuff and so on so it is definitely important to read all the release notes for the 7.4 and if you are coming from the older version then all the versions in the middle as well the second one is also like to carefully review the upgrade notes uh which uh, doesn't exist right now but like when the 7.4 is going to be ready it's going to be here which also can include some important information like right now we kind of already know that there are no breaking changes in the release of 7.4 uh, mainly because it's not LTS version but let's say if the time will come and you will doing the same upgrade to Zabbix 8.0 it's very likely that some of the um, let's say Linux distribution versions might be uh, deprecated or database versions so when you're planning just to upgrade your zabbix it's also very likely that you will have to upgrade your operating system or your database engine which is uh, something like completely different story especially if we're talking about uh, distribution linux distribution version and kind of basically means that you just need to spin up a new version uh, rather than just doing an upgrade. Check and optimize the current database performance based on a vendor's recommendation and considering the requirements of the Zabbix instance. Like This kind of always has to be in place. Uh, no matter if you're planning to upgrade or not, it is important that your database and also Zabbix configuration files 
are actually optimized to the load that you are throwing on your Zabbix instance. So make sure that these are good. If you're very unfamiliar with uh, database tuning or something like for the Postgres, you can find guides here in the uh, in it max wiki there's basically just utility that kind of will do the basic tuning for your config file for mysql or MariaDB, it's better just look out in the community maybe ask someone in the reddit or or discord or whatever to at least guide you on some basic but the most important tuning parameters to make sure that everything is in place. Verify that the versions of all components align with compatibility metrics for the new Zabbix version. So this is also super important, especially like if you have a small instance uh, and you have uh, one single Zabbix server monitoring all sort of different stuff, it might be not a big deal. Uh, with agents, everything is going to be fine. Agents are fully backward compatible, so you don't need to upgrade all of your agents when you're upgrading Zabbix servers. But if you have a proxies, it's definitely worth to consider because proxies should be on the same major version as the Zabbix server. Um, if the difference between the versions is not too big, like let's say you're right now running on a 7.2 and then you upgrade your server to the 7.4, the proxies will continue to collect the data. But um, as far as I remember, they will not be capable to update the configuration. So if you will add some new items to be monitored or change something in like update interval or key or whatever, it's not going to be updated to the proxy. So you also need to plan to upgrade your proxy to the new version. And if you have many of them, and if those are located in some distributed locations, and perhaps you don't even have a direct SSH access, uh, to the proxy so it might not be as easy process so it's better to plan before and uh, depending on configuration of your proxy of course but in many cases I would actually suggest just deleting the proxy and installing the new version instead of doing the upgrade especially if you are using like SQLite as a backend database which is created automatically upon the proxy star so just delete the binary start a new binary uh, install the new binary start it and that's it it's going to connect to the server grab all the configuration and the monitoring begins back up the configuration files for the zabbix server and the zabbix proxy well this is kind of like uh time to um prepare yourself for some accidents usually nothing is going to happen with the configuration files but nevertheless even if like in most cases 90 plus percent it's not going to happen it's better to have a backup if accidentally you i don't know maybe it's even like a human error and you accidentally deleted uh your primary configuration file for the zabbix or or proxy or database whatever it would be a huge loss so it's definitely better to make a backup of all of your configuration files Backup the Zabbix server database and if applicable the Zabbix proxy database. So with a proxy, as I told, like it depends on your on your uh, use case and proxy and how much are you doing and how much you care about all the data. But normally I would just uh, delete the proxy and install the new one. If everything is like super sensitive and like you cannot afford any downtime and stuff like that, of course, you can also do the upgrade on the proxy and then it's better to make a backup backup of the database especially for the server is like super important because that's your only way back if something is messed up during the upgrade and i'm not talking about like mm, i don't know breaking something i'm talking about the cases when uh, let's say you started the upgrade but in the middle there's some sql sql error and you cannot finish that's it if you don't have a backup you don't have a way to start your zabbix in a previous um version and then do some research and get back to the upgrade so super important make the database backup no matter what make it like frequently have it somewhere aside uh, don't accidentally delete it that's your only way back if something goes south and of course backup all the customizations or manual changes made within Zabbix like if you have some um let's say front end changes changes of the front end code or perhaps you have some scripts or modules or some some API integrations it's definitely recommended to backup them all um it is likely especially if we're talking about some code changes in the front end it's not going to fit anymore after the upgrade. And if you are doing that, then you already notice it, that all of those changes usually break 
after the upgrade even in minor version upgrades so especially in a major version but it is better to make a backup of all of that stuff so that at least later on you can come back and see like okay so we were changing this and that let's try to replicate uh, the same changes in the new installation of our Zabbix. Disable high availability on the Zabbix server side and this applies to both ways like if you have official high availability and if you're using high availability with a PCS car sync you should not have high availability active during the upgrade because you definitely must avoid any potential cases when during the upgrade when you are restarting the services uh, Zabbix switches the nodes and something that should not connect to your production database is connecting and then things can go south again and everything can break and you can corrupt your database and you definitely don't want to do that and by the way in my previous videos about a windows i did mention that i am a heavy adobe user and i do use adobe premiere for editing all of these videos that i'm not doing a heavy editing but still so Basically, it's time for a quick break to share something that's really leveled up my editing game lately. This is thanks to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So I've been brushing up on my editing skills and I recently found this awesome class on a Skillshare called Learn Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners by Jordi Vandeput. If you've ever opened Premiere and immediately panicked at the timeline, this class is totally lifesaver. One thing that I loved is how Jordi breaks everything down step by step, from organizing your footage to adding transitions and even color grading. It's super approachable. Honestly, it made my video editing so much more easier. If you're not familiar yet, Skillshare is the go-to platform for creatives made by creatives. It's packed with thousands of classes from beginner to advanced on topics like video editing and motion graphics, photography and filmmaking, design, illustration and animation, and of course also productivity and freelancing tools. Everything is on demand and you can learn at your own pace, which makes it easy to build up your skills. The first 500 people to use the link in my description will get one month free of the Skillshare. So if you've been meaning to finally learn Premiere or just want to sharpen your editing skills, now is the time. So back to the video. So it's definitely is important to check all of the versions that you have before like proceeding and doing the actual upgrade. I already checked that my PHP version is 8.0 and at this point it would be not as important to see what I have right now because well assuming my Zabbix is working right now it would be more, more important if the version 8.0.30 is sufficient and supported by the Zabbix 7.4. That's why we're checking it. Same applies to Depositor SQL version or MySQL version, as in my case. Back up the Zabbix configuration files, and these are the commands how to actually do that. I'm not going to back up my system because it's like completely empty. I've just set it up. So basically, we're copying everything from Etsy Zabbix, where we normally do have all of the configuration files. Then we're copying over all the alert scripts. If you have them, uh, it's very likely that you don't because nowadays alert scripts are not so um, frequently used anymore. People more use like uh, webhook integrations. Copying over all the external scripts. Again, if you have them, if the folder is empty and you know that you don't have any external scripts, there's no need to do that. Copying over user share Zabbix, uh, which basically is uh, the full directory where your Zabbix frontend is located. So again, if you don't have any customizations and then just uh, straight up installations from the packages without any changes, you can skip this step because if something goes south, then you just reinstall uh, the default version of your uh, Zabbix and then obviously also copying the HTTPD so Apache configuration and uh, the special virtual host configuration for the Zabbix which is in the Etsy HTTPD conv.d zabbix.conv stopping the service which we are going to do so just copy paste we're stopping Zabbix server and also HTTPD uh, we can check actually here right now in the Zabbix server log file that it is running and after I perform the stop, which is going to take a couple of seconds, we can check again. So Zabbix server is stopped, version 7013, right? That would be good. Uh, getting back, database update optional. So if you're a Postgres user, then this section is for you. Uh, for me, as my SQL user, it's not that relevant. 
and we have successfully backed up all the data and updated all related components to match the official compatibility matrix uh, of a new Zabbix version, so we can actually proceed with the upgrade. For that, you need to download a new repository of version 7.4. So just copy paste this line. Uh, this is going to be very quick operation. Um, DNF clean all, you can do that. It's not that uh, mandatory. And after this step, the repositories for the new versions are available, allowing us to update all other Zabbix components, including sequentially updating all Zabbix proxies. So what we're doing is DNF update Zabbix minus asterisk, like to upgrade all of the components that start with the Zabbix that we have, and minus Y to automatically confirm all of the upgrade steps that we're actually doing. This step is going to take a couple of seconds, so perhaps there will be time for you to actually wait. Once this is finished, we can go back to the blog and see after successfully completing the update of the Zabbix server packages and its components, we can restart Zabbix to finalize the database structure upgrade. So what happened right now is uh, we previously had a Zabbix version 7.0, which means also our database was um let's say with a schema and data of the 7.0 and right now we install the version 7.4 but it's not started yet so no changes are applied and right now we are starting the service and right with this step the new service of the Zabbix server is going to start the automatic update of uh let's do it like this and there we go it's going to start the automatic update of the database which you can follow through in the zabbix server log file like the completion percentage if it goes to 100 percent and then uh zabbix starts you are lucky um because everything works and you don't need to kind of don't need to worry about it anymore but in reality i would still recommend to monitor the behavior of your zabbix after the upgrade and make sure that everything works properly but basically yeah we're looking for 100 percent uh database upgrade fully completed starting ha manager then we can also start our httpd and after this step also our front end should be accessible uh we can go back here reload and we can see that i'm right now on the zabbix version 7.4.0 beta 2 which means that we can also go to the configuration host, uh, create hosts. No, um, yeah, the wizard is not in a beta, but uh, yeah, it's the new version of the Zabbix with all the functionality that is added to the beta version right now. Uh, finishing task, verify that the Zabbix server and database server are running correctly and have the correct versions. So make sure that upgrade went successfully. Check if the following error appears in the system during the startup of the server or the proxy. The user limit of file descriptors. There's a link in a wiki how you can fix that. I also have a video about how you can fix that. So just search uh, Zabbix file descriptors in the YouTube and you will definitely find it. Ensure that all Zabbix proxies are running and have the correct version. So make sure that you are receiving the data from the proxies and um, everything works. And then you can also proceed to read information about what's new in the Zabbix 7.4. And if you do prefer the video version, I do already have a video of uh, what's new in Zabbix 7.4. So as per usual, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you do want to support me by any means, you can find the link uh, to the Patreon in the description. That's it. See you guys later. Bye bye.